now it is time for a traditional tale from all of our childhoods. And this is the story of Prince Narcissus of Isomeria. Once upon a time, in a far away and distant kingdom, there was a land named Isomeria. The molecules who lived in Isomeria were very special because they were called isomers. Each and every one of them had the same structural formula. Each had two blue, one red, one yellow, and two green functional groups single bonded to two carbon molecules. The nobles of this land were special, and they had a special name called stereoisomers, as all of their bond structures were exactly the same, only their spatial configuration of their bonds differed. Each had a red, a blue, and a green functional group attached to one carbon, and a green, a yellow, and a blue group attached to the other carbon. However, the peasants of this land were not so lucky, and they were named constitutional isomers, as their atoms were joined together in different ways. Some had two blue or two green groups attached to one of their carbons. In this royal land, there was a special royal family made up of a queen and her son, the prince. The prince was named Prince Narcissus, and as time flew by, he became old enough that it became time, according to his mother, for him to settle down and find himself a true love. She decided she would help him with this problem by throwing a ball one evening, and she invited all the loveliest and fairest stereoisomers in all of the surrounding kingdoms to come join him. There was one slight problem to this plan, and that was that her son had very high standards. He was not accustomed to living in a land unlike Whitman's gender ratio, and so he did not realize that being picky would be an issue. And he decided that he would only marry the stereoisomer that looked exactly like him in every way. And so that evening, he decided he would dance with all of the, the stereoisomers and, and check them all out. And, but he found a problem, and that was that they all turned out to be diastereomers. Although they had the same bond sequence as him, the spatial orientation of their bonds was different. So as he danced with them, he, he found that no matter which way he twisted and turned, none of them were his mere image. Eventually, the prince grew very frustrated and, and saddened by this realization because he could not find his true love. He was about to give up hope. And so he left the palace and attempted to soothe his mind during a, a gentle moonlit walk through the woods near his castle. After some time, he came across a smooth and peaceful lake. He slowly approached the edge of the water, and as he did so, he noticed the image of a beautiful stereoisomer looking back at him. Prince Narcissus fell suddenly and deeply, instantaneously, madly in love with the stereoisomer looking back at him. And he decided that he was, he was so in love that he was going to touch his love. However, when he moved closer and touched the water, he realized it was only his enantiomer, his mirror image, not an identical replica. He desperately wanted to lie down next to his love, but no matter how much he rotated and, and wiggled and jiggled, he could not make himself identical to his love. They could only be mirror images of one another, and never exactly the same. The prince was so saddened by this realization that trying to be one with his love, he dove into the water, and because he had never taken swimming lessons, he drowned.